Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading session, the 5th of September 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store at www.tradesignaler.com. Okay, now let's try and decipher exactly uh, what's happening here in terms of the barrage of information that's been uh, out in the last few hours this morning. Okay. Uh, in terms of the uh, European markets, let's uh, first of all uh, look at the Asian markets. Actually, let's see exactly uh, how we've uh, done in terms of reaction to NFP Friday. Okay, so the Nikkei certainly up uh, 111 points, up 0.6. Hang Seng up uh, impressive 1.6%. The Shanghai more or less up by uh, 5 points, which is really considered to be to being flat. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, the yen and the uh, the actual Nikkei, the uh, Nikkei uh, certainly sold off towards the close, uh, and the yen certainly strengthened. Okay, especially given the fact that we hit 104. Okay, uh, now that level certainly has uh, certainly has been lost, unfortunately, back down to 103. Okay, so uh, well, fortunately, if you're a bear, and unfortunate if you're a bull. So again, that certainly has ramifications for the U.S. markets, given the fact that we have an inverse relationship between the yen. And obviously the uh, the actual U.S. markets itself. So again, signaling uh, signaling potential risk aversion. Okay, certainly not a bullish, not the bullish reaction that we had in European markets and uh, U.S. markets. Certainly have been lackluster and certainly weaker towards the uh, close. Okay, uh, right. So economic data or uh, fundamentals this morning. Really, first of all, uh, Australia overnight, Aussie uh, certainly pushed higher in the back of stronger job adverts, okay, and uh, inflation debt certainly stronger, okay, certainly helping. Uh, we had Japanese PMI that came in slightly weaker. We had China cakes in that came in uh, data, PMI data that came in slightly stronger, so thereby helping uh, risk to a large extent, okay. So you certainly had a gap higher in European markets, and then obviously we've certainly... Uh, certainly lost that potential um, bullish momentum you had spanish pmi beating you had the uh, swedish uh, data certainly beating italian data surprisingly beating french data beating okay but german data certainly coming in weaker so again that's a cause for concern as we all know germany dictates the uh, rest of europe so again certainly a cause for concern but the rest of the economic data from eurozone certainly uh, certainly beating then we had uh, eu pmi data certainly coming on the weaker side as well we had uk pmi services coming in a stellar uh, a stellar beat okay 52.9 versus the 50 level so again uh, it's signaling hawkish boe okay and therefore it's considered to be bearish given the fact that there's going to be no more additional rate cuts or additional qe therefore it doesn't support the FTSE moving higher then we had talk well stupid talk with regards to uh, uh, a potential um, um, groundbreaking, very, very important uh, agreement between Russia and Saudi, and everybody thought it was a potential output freeze that they'd agreed to, and et cetera, et cetera, and that certainly failed to uh, to materialise, and uh, really it was all hot air, and the market certainly has given back those gains, especially uh, with regards to oil hitting a, uh, a pivot high of 46.2, down a dollar now, back to 45.2, and therefore that's considered to be bearish. So, whether or not that's the reason for the FTSE 100 rally late in the session on Friday, whether they were trying to front run a potential production freeze, I don't know. Okay, but for now, it certainly isn't making sense for the FTSE to be such a lofty heights with sterling higher as well, and obviously a lack of any potential rate cuts and so on and so forth. Okay, so certainly take that into consideration as well. Okay, from my perspective, FTSE is certainly a strong argument to uh, fall now. Uh, and certainly move lower okay in terms of uh, data yes like i said the german and uh, eu data certainly negated the bullish sentiment okay we have had uh, centix investor confidence in uh, eurozone coming in stronger retail sales coming in stronger for the eurozone okay so again those two arguments certainly there as well certainly valid and that should technically send the uh, the euro usd higher as well so bear that in mind certainly looking for that catalyst to propel the uh, euro usd higher Okay, now in terms of uh, the uh, the actual technicals, let's bring up the technicals for you. Let's start off with the uh, German DAX as always. Okay, so German DAX certainly finding weakness, not certainly not pushing higher. As you can see, that gap level on the daily chart certainly is holding very well. You certainly have a doji on the daily candle again, indicating resistance. Sixty-minute chart, you can see that we certainly are holding that key resistance zone, which is gap fill. 
okay we could have pushed higher but we failed to okay and again like i said the euro usd being into support is going to be very very important okay very very important in determining a potential sustain or potential uh, move higher on european indices we need a uh, weaker euro now again german dax certainly uh, under pressure failing to uh, push the new highs and it's all about that potential gap fill at 10 uh, 680 so again watch out for 10 680 if that cracks then you do have uh, certainly uh, furthermore to go now in terms of the bullish bias or bullish argument for european indices uh, you have merkel's party losing to a potential anti-immigration party in, in her home state so again that's considered to be bearish okay then you have greece potentially no further uh no further allotment of any additional money for greece so again that certainly is bearish okay and um, the other factor that we had as well was with regards to brexit concerns being highlighted over the weekend with japan potentially threatening to move its uh, its hq okay uh, in terms of its companies back to japan so again well that certainly is more as ideal for them they're certainly looking for any excuse in order to uh, to potentially revive growth back home and create more jobs so again that certainly is uh, convenient okay we had this potential uh, situation in north korea as well test firing missiles okay so again certainly is bearish okay amazon tax concerns as well certainly another argument in terms of uh, the uh, bearish nature of the market so again certainly take that into consideration as well so all those variables together certainly uh, certainly strengthen the argument for the markets to move lower especially with regards to political uncertainty in eurozone so again looking for that potential gap to fill and potentially even breaking lower in terms of the french cac let's bring up the cac for you okay go to a daily chart you certainly are into gap fill resistance in the daily chart on the french cac so again certainly a um, an obstacle there for the French CAC to move higher. Again, the breakout level is uh, 4490, so again, a potential retest is looming. 10 minute chart, again, exhausted, no real higher highs. You have an unfilled gap below around the 4540 4, zone, so potential tests of that. And then obviously, you have another unfilled gap below at 4440, so certainly remain open to that. FTSE 100, okay, daily chart first and foremost, you'll be holding the FIB 75% resistance thus far. 60 minute chart, a topping tail, certainly holding thus far. We have a bearish engulfing candle, okay, so certainly consolidating thus far and looking for a move lower on the back of this failed potential oil news, okay. So again, certainly a short squeeze in the FTSE and then obviously you're looking for a reverse with a topping tail as well. You can see the move, I mean, we've had a move from 6.720 up to 6.920, a 200-point move on what? That's the question you need to ask yourself. I mean, especially with economic data coming in stronger than expected, it certainly negates the argument for further QE. So what is the uh, FTSE moving higher on? And that on the back of a uh, potential Fed delaying rate hikes? Um, hmm. Certainly, um, certainly circumspect. Okay, so again looking for a reversal you clearly have a bear flag formation at the moment consolidating within that bearish engulfing candle on the FTSE 100 a 60 minute chart so again looking for further downside in the FTSE especially given the fact that the oil rally was a dud okay right um, in terms of the uh, FTSE that certainly is a situation there 10 minute chart on the FTSE at the moment you clearly have um, resistance here okay which is around a 688 zone okay 688 zone so again, looking for support back down to the 6860, 68, 6860 level. Uh, again, potential 6820 level on the downside. Although you do have an unfilled gap at 6920. So, uh, but I can't see what the catalyst will be, especially with their hawkish BOE and a failed Saudi plan. I, I'm failing to see what the uh, potential catalyst will be. So for now, looking for a flush down to the 6860 and lower. Okay, I think that's a market wrap in terms of technicals. Uh, we can bring up the chart of oil if you like. Again, into previous support equals resistance, and therefore looking for weakness. You can see this uh, more clearly on the four-hour chart. Okay, so you can clearly see the previous support equals resistance. Certainly, it's kept the uh, the actual chart of the uh, oil certainly at bay. So, again, looking for weakness here. Okay, so certainly looking for weakness. Okay, so I think that's a summation, a good summation of European indices. Please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the 25% uh, bonus. Goodbye now.